In this video, I share with you how to get much, much better results from ChatGPT, better responses by mastering prompt engineering. This video is an extract from a training program that I've created, and I wanted to share some of the training with you for free here on YouTube. So it's in two parts. Uh, there's this video, and then there's another one that will follow on afterwards. So let's go to that training now. Let's talk about uh, the art of prompt engineering. And why is this the number one skill? So you may have seen early on in 2023, there are a number of articles uh, that were telling us that there are research shows that there are some firms in the US willing to pay $300,000 salaries for prompt engineers. Uh, I've seen some bigger, $375,000 is the article on the right. $375,000 salaries for prompt engineers. Why and what are prompt engineers? Well, prompt engineering is simply, how do we write prompts? How do we communicate with AI? How do we communicate with large language models? And getting the best out of chat GPT is all about writing the right prompts. You may have heard of the phrase, garbage in equals garbage out. If we ask a bad question, we get a bad answer. If you want better answers, you ask better questions. You've heard all of that. And so we have to figure out how do we better communicate with the large language model so we get better responses. And this is so important. People have realized that you know, it, this is a, a huge uh, emerging skill. In fact, there's also been a lot of other research that shows that employers are increasingly looking for employees that have got skills in prompt engineering, AI, understanding large language models. And I can understand that because I just see the productivity of my team has just gone through the roof with because we spend so much time learning how to do prompt engineering. My whole team is amazing at it and gets so much more done. So prompt engineering is a skill you must learn. You need to figure out the best way to create great prompts. So let me share with you uh, a, a prompt formula to, to get started with prompt engineering. So when you are crafting prompts, there are six components that you want to consider building into those prompts. One of those is a persona. What do I mean by that? Well, by default, ChatGPT plays the role of a personal assistant. So if you ask it to do something, the answer it will give you is as if it's a personal assistant, which is usually pretty good. However, if we tell it to play a different role, let's say you wanted to help you, help you to write a report for a client. If you say to it that, uh, I want you to act as a financial accountant, it will then play the role of a financial accountant. And what you'll find, and there's been a lot of research around this, what you'll find is the response you'll get, the output you'll get will be more nuanced. It will be more detailed. It will be more appropriate to the response from a financial accountant. It will be a better response. It will be a better report that it creates for you if you tell it to play the role of a financial accountant rather than if you leave it blank. So that's a persona, really useful to build into some of your prompts. The next thing is context. Context is really critical. It's the background information. The more information that you give it in the first place, the better the answer. And that's best explained by showing you some examples in a short while, which we will do. Uh, task is the obvious one. That's where you tell it what you want it to do. I want 10 ideas for writing a blog. That's the task. Then we have an exemplar. And by the way, we don't have to do all of these, but these are things to consider in your prompts. So an exemplar is an example. If you give it an example of uh, what you are looking for, it will come up with a better, better outcome. So that could be an example of what you're looking for, or the example could be the, the framework, the format you want the output in. And that leads us on to format. Format is things like, do you want it to create an email? Is it a, a text message? Is it a research report? Is it, do you want it to do it with bullet points? Do you want headings, subheadings? 
there are different ways of formatting the output. And what's interesting is that the response that you'll get will can be very changed dramatically based upon the format you tell it to use. So, for example, if you want to respond, if you want some help responding to a client question, then if you tell it to respond as an email response, it will be a different style of writing to if it's a text response or a social media response, because it will know that we tend to we tend to write in a different way if we're answering a, a social media question as opposed to writing an email. And then we have tone and style. That's the writing tone and the writing style. Extremely important, and I'm going to give you some examples to demonstrate that. So we're going to go into ChatGPT, and we're going to look at a couple of of examples. Just bear me a second um, while I just check something. So let's start a new chat. And if I go across to ChatGPT, what I've done just to save time is rather than you watching me type away, I've pre-written my prompts to show you my examples so I can just copy and paste. So for these first three examples I want to do, uh, I want to look at this, the idea of communicating value. So I teach value pricing, uh, as I said before. With value pricing, one of the most important skills that we have to master is how do we communicate the value to a client? And so when we're writing, for example, a proposal or a fixed price agreement or pricing brochure or putting on our website the things that we do, the way that we describe what we do can have a big impact on how people perceive the value. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to put in a prompt here. So let's imagine that you want to, it, this could be an email to a client, it could be in a proposal, it could be a web on, on your website, but you want to tell people what you do when you do a tax return. Now in the US, they call them a 1040 individual tax, tax return. So I've done this prompt here. Let's imagine that I already have some, some bare bones wording that says 1040 individual income tax return. And it says, so at the moment I have, to assist you in your legal obligation to file an annual tax return. This includes preparation of your individual tax return, electronic filing and federal tax return to tax, taxing authorities, and electronic filing and state tax return to taxing authorities. I mean, that, that's okay, but they're just the features of what we do. And one of the things we learn from marketing is that people buy don't buy features, they buy benefits. So let's imagine you've got that wording and you want to enhance it. You want it to be, come across as a little bit more enticing. So I've written a prompt that says, enhance the product description for, and it then says the 1040 individual income tax return, by highlighting the benefits of each feature. Here is the current description. So a really simple prompt, and I just cut and paste in there what I'm currently describing my 1040 tax return as. So let's hit this button and see what it does. And you'll see it works pretty fast. And it says here, uh, experience the ease and convenience of managing your annual tax obligations with our 1040 individual income tax return solution. Discover the benefits of each feature. Effortless tax preparation sorry, tax return preparation, our 1040 individual income tax return makes the daunting task of preparing your tax return a breeze. Say goodbye to the complexities of tax forms and calculations as our solution guides you through the process step by step. You'll enjoy a streamlined and stress-free experience. Then it talks about secure electronic filing and the benefits of that, state tax return simplified, the benefits of that, and so on and so forth. And that's a much better worded answer in terms of communicating to the client the benefits to them of what you do. So if you're looking to come up with better wording for the things that you do in your proposals, your fixed price agreements, in on your website, your pricing brochures, then you will find that ChatGPT can help you uh, and make the job take just seconds as you saw. Now, that was with a really, really simple prompt, though, because we could do much, much better. That's OK, but I've, there's a lot of things we can add to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the pencil icon in the right next to my prompt, which means I can now edit it. 
So that's the end of part one. If you found that valuable, please do two things. Number one, uh, click the thumbs up, but also let me know in the comments below, what was the, the biggest insight that you got? Also, I before you go to video number two, if you have not grabbed our ebook yet, ChatGPT for accountants and bookkeepers, we'll put the link below in the description. So go and grab that and also go and click on the button to go to video number two. I will see you there. Bye for now.